Hi, this is Dr. Justin here. Today's talk is on magnesium deficiency and the many different causes that can contribute to magnesium being low in the body. So the one of the first main causes we see is stress. And stress comes in many different shapes and forms. One of the main things that happens when we are stressed is we see an imbalance of cortisol in the body. Now cortisol is a stress hormone. It's a glucocorticosteroid. And when cortisol goes out of balance, it will cause us to, to burn through our magnesium faster. And stress can be from chemical sources, such as food or toxicity. It can be from physical sources, chronic pain, injuries, over or under exercise, and also from emotional issues, too. One of the next things we see causing magnesium deficiency are diuretics. Diuretics can be in the form of excess caffeine. even medications. Right? All of these things in the end will actually decrease fluid from our body, um, cause decreased um, hydration, and also in that process our body will eventually urinate out these minerals and can potentially increase magnesium deficiency. One of the next potential sources is diet. So in today's uh, American diet we are seeing increased amounts of refined carbohydrates in the forms of sugars and junk foods and excess grains, etc. When we take in excess carbohydrate, our body uses certain minerals and even B vitamins to help process these things in the Krebs cycle. So the more we eat foods that are devoid of nutrients, so we're not getting much nutrients in, and then we're eating foods that require a lot of nutrients to process them, we just have a supply and demand factor where we're demanding more nutrients to break them down, but we're not getting enough back in. So this diet factor can actually induce a magnesium deficiency. And magnesium is used in over 300 <laughs> enzymatic processes throughout the body and has thousands of different um, you know, essential um, things in the body that it does. So it's very important that we're eating a diet that is nutrient-based and not causing more of a deficiency of something we're not getting much of anyway. Next is depression. Magnesium deficiency is also linked up with depression. So again, depression has many different causes, but magnesium can be an important factor in there. And if we're diagnosed with depression, a typical medication that's prescribed is a SSRI, which is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. And these medications are actually typically known to induce more nutritional deficiencies. Some of the main ones are going to be folic acid, B12, and B5. This is really important. So what we're seeing is a, a vicious cycle here where if we're deficient in magnesium, that's going to cause depression, but then the medications that we're being prescribed are actually going to further more nutritional deficiencies and even reduce magnesium. So we have this kind of vicious cycle starting to go there, and the, the dog is wagging the tail, not the tail wagging the dog. So we want to get to the root of the issue here. Next, magnesium deficiencies can also cause vasoconstriction. That's nothing more than a, a essentially a decreased size of our blood vessel, decreased diameter of our blood vessels. So when our blood vessels get smaller and smaller, that's going to increase blood pressure overall. When blood pressure increases, that causes the heart to actually have to work harder. And the heart has to work harder. It burns through more CoQ10 and more nutrients such as carnitine, so we're inducing more nutritional deficiencies. And one of the main medications that we actually use to bring down blood pressure is actually a calcium channel blocker because calcium creates more an, ex an excitatory current in the heart where magnesium actually does the exact opposite. It inhibits calcium because calcium and magnesium tend to work together on a seesaw effect. So magnesium is actually a natural calcium channel blocker and we can get ex excellent um, lowering of blood pressure with magnesium. So again, if we're taking an increased blood pressure, what's typically prescribed then is a diuretic. And again, the tail is wagging the dog, not the dog wagging the tail. So we're setting us up for more nutritional deficiencies because diuretics then cause more magnesium problems. One of the next factors is bone loss or osteoporosis. And in regards to bone loss, we also have osteopenia, which is nothing more than pre-osteoporosis. So 70% of magnesium is actually going into the bone. So it's an important hardening substance in the bone. Most people are focusing on calcium, but magnesium is really, in my opinion, almost even more important. 
So again, bone loss is a common symptom of magnesium deficiency. Typically what's done with bone loss is HRT is usually prescribed, that's usually, that stands for hormone replacement therapy. Uh, in previous day and ages we used to use horse hormones, uh, Premarin and Provera, and these commonly actually cause more nutritional deficiencies. But again, if we're prescribing bioidentical hormones, maybe even unopposed estrogen, that's actually going to cause more nutritional deficiencies in regards to the B vitamins and the folic acid and the B12. So again, we're creating more of this vicious cycle, not really getting to the root of the issue. So again, using supplemental magnesium can actually help address some of this bone loss, and the medications, again, are creating more problems, not really getting to the solution. Now again, in, the, in regards to the HRT, bioidentical progesterone and estrogen may be recommended, especially if the patient is menopausal, but you want to test to assess that specifically. Next would be muscle spasm. So typically when we see a magnesium deficiency, the muscles will spasm or the, your, your eyelid may twitch a little bit, and that's a common sign of magnesium issues. Now also we'll see sore muscle with magnesium deficiency. And what we typically see from there are medications called NSAIDs prescribed. And NSAIDs, it's a class of, medica a class of medications, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and one of these is ibuprofen. And ibuprofen is known to actually kill 19,000 people a year and cause many different nutritional deficiencies from iron issues to different B vitamin issues too. So again, we're creating more problems with the NSAIDs affecting the B vitamins, affecting liver function, and affecting gut function. So you can see here there are many different causes of magnesium issues here. Um, we want to really focus on getting to the root, not quite using medications that are just creating more of a vicious cycle and not really getting to the root cause. Hope everyone found this video informative. Uh, for more questions or information, feel free to visit justinhealth.com and or call or email the office. Thanks. Have a great day.